Alright, hello everybody, and in a previous video, I found the formula for the surface area of a donut. So today, I want to find a formula for the volume of a donut. So let's just get started here. I've drawn up a quick picture of a donut right here, and notice that all a donut is, is a circle that's offset along the x-axis that's being rotated around the y-axis or revolved around the y-axis. And if you take a look at this circle here, we can write a simple little equation for it and we'll need it a bit later on. So this circle has a center somewhere around here. So why not call the X displacement of this circle capital R? And we want this circle to have some radius, so let's give it some radius little r. And to find the equation of the circle, well, notice that the circle is being displaced r units to the right along the x-axis. So our first term in our equation of the circle will be x minus this r, bigger, squared, plus, and our circle is not being moved up or down. So we'll just have a y squared like so, and we'll have the radius squared, but the radius of our circle is exactly r as we defined it to be. So this is the equation of our circle and we're revolving this thing all the way around the y-axis to get the shape of a donut. All right, so now that we've established that, let's start trying to figure out some way to find the volume of this thing. Well, maybe a good idea would be to cut the donut up into somewhat similar shapes so that we can form an expression for each of those shapes and maybe use an integral to add all of them up. So if you imagine taking a knife or something and cutting your donut sideways like so. So imagine your donut is being cut along say this plane right here. And if you take the cross section of the donut, well the shape you're going to get if you cut it along those planes is some kind of washer shape. So something that looks like that. And we want to take many many slices along our donut so that we can use an integral to add all of them up. So of course each of these washers here will have some kinds of infinitesimal width to them. And of course the dimensions of each of our washers here will vary depending on where we cut on our donut. So of course now the idea is to find some kind of expression for the volume of each of these washers that's dependent on some variable so we can add them all up using an integral later on. So since we're cutting along the y-axis it's probably a good idea to use y as our variable because if you take a close look right here this width right here this infinitesimal width is exactly our dy because we're slicing it infinitely many times kind of along the y-axis. So now that we can use y as our variable of integration, of course now we have to find the volume of these washers in terms of y. So first of all, to find the volume of this thing, we need to find this area right here. Because if we can find that area, we all we have to do is multiply by this dy here to get our volume of our infinitesimal washer. Well, first of all, we need to find the shaded area here. So all we need to do is find the area of the big circle and subtract it from the area of the smaller circle. And to find that, we need to know what our big radius is, let's call it B, and what our small radius is, let's call it A. So the area of that thing becomes pi times the big radius, which is B squared, and then subtracting pi times the small radius squared, which is A squared. And that gives us the area of the shaded region. And we need to multiply everything by this dy right here to get the volume. All right, and now our job is to find b and a in terms of y. Because our b and a values are always changing depending on where we look on our donut. So I'm going to draw up another picture here. Say this was the blue circle that we had over here. And imagine we cut our donut along this dotted line here. Well, from this picture, you can clearly see where our B and A values are because the B value is our big radius of our washer, which lies right here. And our A value is a smaller radius, which lies right here. So if we know this distance here is some distance Y, we can use the equation of our circle here to find out what these two points are just by simply rearranging it a bit. So these B and A values, notice that they're just the X values or the X coordinates of both of those points. So it's really quite easy just rearranging this equation a little bit. So let's just subtract y on both sides. So we get x minus r squared is equal to r squared minus y squared. Taking the square root on both sides, we get the positive or negative square root of this thing right here. And we just need to add r on both sides to get x is equal to r plus or minus the square root of r squared minus y squared. 
and the square root thing here is always a positive value. So this big radius right here becomes r plus this square root, so r squared minus y squared, and this smaller radius here becomes r minus r squared minus y squared. So if you imagine our washer again from just before, this point here, this point B, represents this distance, or this radius right here, and this point A just represents this smaller radius of our washer. And we just found two expressions for two of these parameters right here in terms of Y. So now what we can do is muck around with equations a little bit. So first of all, let's factor out a pi out of everything. So if we factor out a pi out of everything, we're left with B squared, minus a squared but notice that is a difference of two squares so we can rewrite this as b plus a times b minus a then dy at the end so now we can substitute our alternate expressions for a and b in terms of y into this formula right here so now this is equal to pi and then b plus a what happens if you add b and a together well r plus r will give us 2r but notice that this square root and this negative square root here will cancel out so b plus a in this case will just give us 2r and what happens if you take b minus a well first of all r minus r will give us zero this square root here minus a negative square root is exactly the same as this thing here plus this thing here which gives us 2 times the square root of r squared minus y squared and then of course we have our dy at the end and we can clean things up a little bit here we can combine these two here to give us a 4 and then we have a pi and an r so we have 4 pi r and then this square root right here r squared minus y squared and then a dy hanging off the end so this right here is our final expression for the volume of each of our washes that we cut along our donut. So now all that's left for us to do is to integrate that thing. So let's get rid of this stuff over here. So now all we have to do is integrate all of our washes. So adding all of our washes up to get the total volume of our donut. So we have the integral of 4 pi r, but that's just a constant in terms of y. So let's pull that out the front. So we have 4 pi r times this square root here, r squared minus y squared dy. And where does our integral start and where does our integral end? Well, remember that we're integrating with respect to y. That means we're integrating from the bottom of our donut up to the top of our donut. And this point here is zero. Well, this point here is exactly negative r because if you imagine the line right here, this is still our radius, little r right here, so this point here is negative r. And same goes for the top. We're integrating from negative r up to positive r. So our integral goes from negative r to r. And you can solve this thing using like trig sub or something like that. But you can be a bit more smart about this integral because if you have a look at the expression inside, that's just the equation of a semicircle. So what does that look like? Well, it's just a semicircle positive semicircle because we have a positive square root right here and our radius of our circle is this right here r so we have an r and we're going along our y-axis or something and if we're integrating this thing from negative r to r those are exactly the end point of our semicircle so from negative r to r so if we're integrating this thing all we're doing is taking the area of the circle right here and that happens to be a half of the total area which is pi the radius squared so this thing right here is exactly the value of our integral so let's plug that in so now what do we have we have 4 pi r times 1 half pi r squared and we can clean things up a bit dividing this 4 by 2 here we'll get 2 pi and we have 2 pi so we want to put a squared in there and then we have bigger little r squared and that is our final formula for the volume of a donut. So if you know the equation of the circle that our donut is based from, well, we can just pull out these two specific values right here, capital R and little r, and plug them into this formula to get the volume of our donut. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope everyone enjoyed it, and I'll see everyone next time.